These are the best pen testing labs to build your skills now here in 2023. Now, I'm going to cover a number of different cases, right? I know a lot of you that watch my channel are beginners that are looking to get into the space. We'll cover that first. What would I recommend for the complete beginner? But then we'll also look at specifically within different focus areas within pen testing. So what I would recommend for web pen testing, network pen testing, active directory, red teaming, and a few bonuses for you as well if you want to go down some different paths, different niches within cybersecurity. I know some people that watch this channel are already in the field, so I think that will certainly be very helpful. So number one, let's start with the complete beginner. Well, I won't really deviate too much from the common advice out there. I would definitely recommend Pico CTF and TryHackMe. These are both very great platforms. To be honest, even if you're more in the intermediate to advanced, like you could definitely get some good value out of these platforms because let's face it, there's so much that you could learn in cybersecurity. Even if you're an expert in a particular niche within pen testing, right? There are likely a lot of areas where you could still benefit a lot from going back to basics. I mean, I go back to the basics all the time. Definitely would recommend this for complete beginners though, especially because it is a very hands-on way to get some practice early on. And hands-on practice is going to be your best bet. Now, when you're starting off, you want to get those quick wins. You want to get some good motivation because that's going to help you, for one thing, get a better feel of what the job will entail, if it's something that you would enjoy or not. And then second of all, it will allow you to actually develop this skill set because the theory is important. I'm not going to say it's all about hands-on only. You definitely want to get some of that theory, but you also want to actually be practicing the stuff you're learning because that's how it's actually going to click in your mind. You're going to actually learn this stuff. And I think Try Hack Me especially is a very good mix of that with the theory and the application side of things. Now, another thing that I want to make you guys aware of is I do offer what is called the Elevate Cyber Year Pass, which is ideal for beginners if you really want to fast track your journey into a pen, your first pen testing job. I mean, we have people in the community that already have a job in cybersecurity and they just want to accelerate their skills that much faster. Essentially what it is, is I do four courses uh, that are completely live throughout the year. And they're all six-week courses, two hours per webinar, two webinars a week. And so we cover different topics within, within cybersecurity. So for example, like web pen testing, network pen testing, we're doing active directory pen testing right now. And so over the course of the year, you will have exposure into all the core areas, all the core things you need to know to get a job into this field. And we also do weekly webinars where it's a small group setting and I can give you really individualized advice. Like, Certainly, if you're watching these videos, I can give you some generalized advice and that will be serve you pretty well. But to be honest, to give you the best advice, I have to know a little bit more about you specifically because your journey might be a little bit different than the next person, right? Because you might have a unique background, a unique set of skills, and we want to leverage that to the fullest so we can help you get a job in this field as quickly and efficiently as possible. So if that's something that sounds interesting to you, definitely send me an email at uh, ryan at elevatecybersecurity.net and we could set up a free call and, and just talk through and see if I can even give you some free value as well and find out if it is a good fit for you. But moving on to web pen testing, I would say the number one resource, the number one lab that you can use for that would be the Port Swigger Web Academy. When you really get down into focusing on these web vulnerabilities and exploitation, the best resource will be that it is super comprehensive and it has a ton of labs and stuff as well. I would highly recommend this. Now, there's also some other platforms like um, Damn Vulnerable Web App and uh, OWASP Juice Shop. That's another really good one as well. But I think in terms of the scope, what all is covered in it and the labs and how in-depth everything is, and it is pretty challenging, it's definitely something that is useful for intermediate and advanced learners. If you're a complete beginner, you might want to stick with the web portion in TryHackMe first and then come over to Port Swigger Web Academy because some of the exercises are, they're a little bit tougher. I'm, I'm not going to lie. They're a little bit more challenging, but this is the go-to resource if you really want to push yourself in uh, the area of web pen testing, which I would definitely recommend for anyone looking to get their first job in cybersecurity, just because web 
is such a popular thing, right? I mean, every single company has a website for everything. There's always a web application for like, you know, the internal company directory, right? Uh, they probably have a you know customer facing web page where they sell their products, uh, a web page for tracking their time, their time sheets, right? So there's just so many different web applications you're, you're probably going to come across once you land your first job. And I mean, they can all be vulnerable to cyber attacks. So they need pen testers that can test them. And so since you get typically such a high volume of those, it will be kind of expected that every pen tester on the team has some proficiency with testing these applications. So this is definitely an area you want to focus on no matter what uh, as a general uh, recommendation. Now, the next thing is network pen testing. That's another one that's pretty all-encompassing, right? Because let's say you're doing a mobile assessment. Well, it's still going to have the back end, still going to have some kind of IP address associated with it. It's going to be on a server. And of course, if you're doing an internal assessment, there's going to be a lot of networking involved with that. So this is definitely another core area you're going to want to focus in on. The lab that I would recommend for that is Hack the Box. Now, again, as a recommendation, if you're completely new, you might want to start with Try Hack Me. They have some network pen testing rooms on there that you can go through that's going to hold your hand and really get you up to speed. But once you've done a little bit of that, I would definitely recommend taking the plunge into the non-guided learning that Hack the Box provides, the exploratory learning as they call it, because it does not hold your hand whatsoever, which means you're going to have to Google a lot of stuff. You're going to have to look a lot of stuff up, which is very in line with what you're going to be doing on the job, because a lot of times you're going to be testing technology and, and things you've never seen before. And that's just normal part of the job, feeling lost like that, right? So the way that you navigate that is you get really good at Googling stuff, reading through documentation, and just kind of poking around with stuff until you find a vulnerability and, and exploit it, right? And so this is going to give you very good practical challenge is going to level up your skill set. So definitely I would recommend Hack the Box when it comes to, to that as well. And it's going to help you a lot with those internal assessments. Maybe you don't do them right away as a junior pen tester. Actually, I did do them like pretty much like a month or two into my first pen testing job. But I know some people that say they haven't done that until later. So your mileage may vary there. But either way, certainly on the job interviews, you're going to need to be able to answer those questions. You want to expose yourself to those internals. You need to know network pen testing. And beyond that, Active Directory is the other really big one. And my recommendation here, even though there are other labs out there, and certainly you can do like Try Hack Me, Throwback. I've heard good things about Hack the Box Academy as well. But really, the number one recommendation in terms of a lab that would give you for Active Directory is to actually build your own Active Directory lab. This is going to teach you so much. It's going to teach you what this stuff looks like from the sysadmin perspective, you know, how you actually go about installing Active Directory domain services on a server, how you actually stand up the environment, how you configure things. And you could also go and find one of those scripts online that will, after you install Active Directory, set up a vulnerable environment for you. And then you can start poking around on that as if it's like a CTF or a, a practice environment to find these vulnerabilities. So one thing that comes to mind is uh, GitHub. There is a script called VulnAD. You can look into that one and use that to automatically create that vulnerable environment. And then after you exploit it, you want to take things a step further because, you know, as much as I love try hack me, hack the box and stuff, you could really fall into that mindset of I got the user flag, I got the root flag, okay, I'm done. But really, if you want to push your skill set to the max, what you're going to want to do is go beyond that. Go beyond root, as they say, and start to get a better understanding after you exploit that of how things are set up. Why is it vulnerable in the first place? So once you exploit this Active Directory environment, what I would highly recommend is go and log in. Now that you have the credentials, log in as the domain administrator. Start looking around at the configurations of these different users, of these different services, and find out what settings applied to those actually resulted in it being vulnerable and then see, can I fix that? Can I patch that? And by the way, as you're doing all these challenges, take notes so that you can reference them later and you really gain the max value out of your experience and also turn them into blog posts. That is one key X factor people are not taking enough advantage of. If you're going to do the work, if you're going to put in this effort to learn this stuff on your own when you don't have to, when you could just be playing video games or something. You want to make sure you're capitalizing that. Definitely take notes on all these challenges and things that you're doing. And so you could showcase them to potential employers down the line. 
Now, next, I will jump into some red team stuff here. I will say red team is a bit of another beast, right? It is definitely related to pen testing in many ways, but typically it's not an entry level job. But I know a lot of you guys have that either on your radar down the line or you're currently pen testers and you want to, you know, make the move into red teaming. So for red teaming, I would say the best recommendation is to take that Active Directory Lab that you just built and start expanding upon that. Start setting up some logging and monitoring, some common blue team tools and technologies that you would go up against, like maybe like antivirus, some, you know, like a Splunk instance, some Seam, right? Event logging, stuff like that. And just practice doing your attacks and really look at looking at it from the perspective of both the offense and the defense so you can gain an understanding of okay i ran this tool what kind of traffic does it generate what are the indicators of compromise that are left behind and am i using this in the best opsec way right like does the logging and monitoring pick up on this you know how can i maybe blend in more with the legitimate traffic on the network because one thing to understand is there's no such thing as being invisible on a network the only way to be invisible on a network is to simply do nothing and of course that is at odds with our objectives as the adversary right we need information we need data you know whatever our objective is we need to carry that out it's going to require us taking some actions on the target. So instead of being invisible, more so the goal is to blend in with the legitimate traffic. Because here's the thing, if a defender knows where to look, they're going to find you. Like they're going to be able to find you if they're good at their job. So really, it's not about that. It's about blending in with the traffic. Because another thing to consider is these defenders, they might be defending hundreds or thousands of servers. So if they're not tipped off to you in the first place, if you didn't trigger any of those alarms, then it's very likely that you can fly under the radar. But having an understanding of the actions you're taking, what those are, right? When you run the tool, you know, do you need to tweak any of the settings? If you run it this way, how is it different than running it this other way? Is there a stealthier way to do things? And that is what you're going to be learning by taking this lab environment, installing these tools and looking at this stuff from an offensive and defensive perspective. Now, as a few bonuses here, perhaps you are interested in doing some API assessments, right? You know, maybe even mobile. API and mobile go pretty hand in hand because usually mobile applications are just front ends for an API that's running on the back end, serving up all that data. Well, what I would recommend for APIs is, you know, deploy a vulnerable API and start playing around with it. There's a lot of options out there. There's a DevSlops Pixie. OWASP uh, Crappy, C-R-A-P-I. I always thought that one was a funny name. Uh, but yeah, you have these vulnerable applications that you can stand up and practice on. So definitely take advantage of that and set those up and exploit them. And then, you know, similarly, go back. To, you'll have the code, right? You deployed this thing. You'll have the code. You can go through and look and see, okay, why is this vulnerable? How would I actually be able to remediate this vulnerability if I want to fix the issue? And you can get exposure to using stuff like Postman with Burp Suite and all of that stuff as well. And, you know, definitely read blog posts out there and stuff when it comes to all these topics. It's going to be very helpful. Don't try to just do this stuff in isolation. Just, you know, deploy the vulnerable machine and then just scratch your head and be like, well, this is too hard. I don't know how to do it. Yeah, of course, you're not going to know how to do it at first. You're new to it. So what you need to instead do, do a lot of research, do a lot of Googling, read blog posts, all of that stuff. It's going to help you so, so much, not just for the task at hand, but once you get in the field as well, because you're going to be doing that a lot. And then the other bonus is assembly and exploitation. Now, this is something, a regret that I had. I spent a lot of time before I even dove into any of the low-level exploitation stuff. I thought it wasn't important. I'm like, well, I don't really want to get into exploit development. I didn't understand the purpose of buffer overflow. I'm like, I don't get why it's on OSCP. Is it just as like a gatekeeping thing or what? Like, I would never do this on an assessment. And I was very wrong. And this is why. For the low-level stuff, right? Especially on red teaming and, and stuff like that, when you need to bypass stuff like antivirus, EDR, things like that. Yeah, you bet you're going to have to understand those low-level ways these systems work, both Linux and Windows. And that's just going to make you such a better attacker if you understand things at this level. And let's face it, it's also a really cool skill set to just be down in there into the assembly, into the zeros and ones, and finding ways to exploit stuff or bypass defenses and things like that. Really, I think that is the direction the industry is moving into as a whole. You're going to need to know the low-level computer stuff because... 
the defenses are getting better and better as the years go by. And it's getting more and more difficult to bypass these defenses as attackers. So we're really getting to the point where eventually I think the best attackers, all of them are going to have a solid foundation in exploitation and assembly in the binary level of stuff. So really, I would recommend to dive into that and for resources, because this video is about labs that you can implement, right? To start learning this stuff today. I would highly recommend if you're just getting started with this stuff to start with a site called Pwn College. This is actually some courses that are run by some professors, I believe, at University of Arizona State. And this is a very well put together training platform and it's free. Anyone can participate in it, even if you don't go to Arizona State. I mean, I, I don't go to Arizona State, right? But yeah, you could participate in it. They have all these labs. They have so many labs to do and they have lectures where they explain stuff uh, office hours. They have a Discord channel where you can ask questions. Very, very good resource, especially on the Linux side. I will say, don't get hung up too much on the Linux versus Windows, because if you learn, let's say Linux first, but you really want to use this for Windows for say like bypassing defenses that you would encounter in Windows and stuff like that. Well, it's very easy once you have a foundation in one to jump over to the other. There's definitely some subtle key differences as subtle and not so subtle differences between Linux and Windows assembly and exploitation and like how all that stuff works, like syscalls and everything. And even between x86 and 32-bit, there's a difference as well. But if you just start with Linux 64-bit or even 32-bit, you're going to be completely fine to learn the other stuff. It's not going to be such a leap. So they focus on Linux 64-bit and yeah, it's a great starting point. And then from there, you can branch off into some other trainings and stuff out there to learn that. Another shout out that I wanted to throw in as well, I'll put the link to this in the description below. It's actually the exploit dev path by Z. Uh, he is uh, one of the guys in the cybersecurity community and makes a lot of great content on exploit development and exploit research and things like that. And he actually runs a podcast with uh, Day Zero called the Day Zero Podcast. Uh, I love that one. Shout out to that, by the way. Uh, but he actually created an entire step-by-step -step recommendation of how to learn exploit development from zero. Even if your goal isn't to become like a full-on exploit developer, going through this training and developing the skill set is going to help you a lot as a red teamer, even a pen tester as well. So I'll drop the link to that in the description below. And I just want to give that a shout out because that is I think extremely valuable. So let me know if there's anything else you would like more info about. If there's something maybe I missed, you'd like me to cover in a future video. And if you want to get into some technical content, I have that on the screen for you right now. I'll see you guys right over in those videos. Thanks for watching.